In this video, we will show you the basics of using NextGen to file locate requests. Upon logging into iSight, the first screen you see should be the NextGen interface. If not, click the NextGen button in the upper left corner of the screen. To begin a session with iTake NextGen, first ensure that your caller information is correct and that you have the Iowa tab selected. If you need to edit your caller information, be sure to click the Save Changes button before continuing. Once your caller information is up to date, click the New Ticket button in the lower right corner of the screen. With iTIC NextGen, you start the locate process by locating and identifying the worksite on the map. Enter an address or name of a building in the Starting Address Location field. If your initial search does not yield the desired location, we recommend you try the Advanced Search function. With Advanced Search, you can look for a nearby intersection, GPS coordinates, or even the mapping from a previous ticket. You can view an in-depth tutorial on Advanced Search in the NextGen Help Center. Once you have found the correct location, you can start mapping out your worksite. You will do this by creating one or more shapes on the map that represent your excavation area. These shapes are called excavation entities. You have several options available to ensure you can precisely and accurately cover your worksite. Let's take a look at them now. The Create Circle tool allows for the placement of one or more circular excavation entities. You will be prompted to enter information about the proposed dig site. All fields are required. The radius will determine the size of the circle. Use the drop-down menu to indicate how the worksite is designated. The description field is reserved for additional information for locating and or describing the worksite. With the Create Circle tool active, click the map where you would like to place your circle. Placing additional entities on the map will require additional information. The Create Route tool is used for creating long and narrow excavation entities and is ideal for jobs such as sidewalk repairs or utility line installations in areas without established roads. As with the Create Circle tool, you will need to enter a series of information about the worksite. Once you have entered the required information, you can start creating your route by clicking on the map where you would like to begin. Continue clicking until you have reached the end of your route, then click End Route. If your route is not wide enough to cover the work area, don't worry. You can edit the route's width after you've drawn it. We'll come back to that in a moment. The next tool is Select Parcel. The Select Parcel tool allows you to use parcel data to map out the work area and is a good choice for work that is taking place at a specific address. With Select Parcel Mode on, click the area of excavation. If parcel data is available, you will be presented with the Select Parcel menu. Review the list and choose the best option for your worksite. Then click OK. To end Select Parcel Mode, click the End Parcel button. Similar to Select Parcel, Select Feature allows you to create excavation entities based on available map features, such as roads or highways. Select Feature is the perfect tool for projects taking place in and along road rights of way, such as utility main installations or road repairs. After entering a width, start by clicking on the road at the beginning of your worksite. To finish mapping, make a second click at the end of your worksite. The Create Polygon tool allows you to freehand draw an excavation entity. The Create Polygon tool is intended as a last resort and should only be used in situations where no other excavation entity will properly cover the dig site. In Create Polygon mode, click on the map where you would like to begin. Continue setting points until you have encompassed the entire work area. To close out the polygon, click on the same point where you began. You will be presented with the Polygon Information Form. The street, cross street, marking instructions, and driving directions information are all required. If there is an address, enter it in the address field as well.
You can delete or modify any of the excavation entities you have created in your session by clicking the Edit Locates button. While in edit mode, you can delete any excavation entity by right-clicking on it. With the edit mode active, you can also click on an existing entity to modify it. Edit mode allows you to modify all aspects of your excavation entities. When you have finished mapping and your entire excavation area has been encompassed, click Next. NextGen automatically calculates the most efficient way to break up or combine the excavation entities you have created and assign them to locate requests. In this example, NextGen has determined that three tickets are required to cover the excavation areas. These tickets are represented by the tabs in the upper left corner of the screen, temporarily named Ticket A, B, and C. If you see a red exclamation point, it means the ticket is missing required information that must be entered before the ticket can be released. There will be a matching exclamation point in the section where the information is missing, and a red border around each required field that is empty. The red globe icon indicates the mapping on that ticket has not been reviewed. You must review the mapping on each ticket before they can be released. The green chain link icon indicates that group edit mode is on. Group edit mode allows you to make changes to all tickets in the current session simultaneously. You can toggle group edit mode on and off by clicking on it. Fill out the information on each ticket as accurately as possible. In this example, all three tickets have a common customer, North Central Positronics. With Group Edit Mode on, entering the customer's name in the Working for Company field will carry over to all three tickets. The same will be true for the Excavation Method, White Lining, and Duration questions. Turning Group Edit Mode off allows for entering information on each ticket individually. In this example, the type of work will vary on each ticket, so we'll fill out that field while in individual edit mode. NextGen automatically generates location information based on the mapping and information you entered on the previous page. It should describe the entire work area in great detail. If marking instructions or other location information is incomplete, be sure to enter any additional information in their corresponding fields. However, if marking instructions are inaccurate, be sure to double-check your mapping. If necessary, you should return to the mapping stage and remap the area. If you run into trouble, remember to consult the map on the right side of the page. When you have finished filling out and reviewing all of your ticket's information, click the Next button. This will take you to the Ticket Disposition page. Here you can edit the start date and time, and action NextGen will take with each ticket. Consult the Session Disposition table for an overview of each ticket. When you are ready, click the Submit button. This will activate the action assigned to each ticket, which typically means releasing the tickets to the affected utilities. You will also be presented with the utility notification list. Depending on your eyesight privileges, each ticket should now display a ticket number along with its temporary name. You can tab through the tickets to review each utility notification list. You can now choose to start a new session, log out, or click Finished to view a list of your current tickets in Excavator Ticket Management.